All right, guys, I want to go ahead today and do our second video in the U-scope. Uh, we're going to do advanced functions today. It's advanced measurements, cursors, and data management. And data management is going to cover creating your own presets, handling screenshots, and then modifying screenshots to print. And I'm going to go ahead and throw a cam sensor signal up on the U-scope using my vehicle simulator. So I want to go ahead and pause this. Now, if I wanted to make advanced measurements, uh, using cursors, I'm going to go over to menu. Remember again, anything we select on the bottom is going to be in the top of the screen here, in the right hand side. I'm going to open the menu. We're going to scroll down to cursors. Now I'm only going to turn on one set of cursors at a time so we don't get overwhelmed. But we're going to just use our left and right arrow, turn the cursors on. Then we're going to scroll back up to our time cursors and using, once it's highlighted, we're going to use our left and right arrows to move the cursor. So what we can do is we can actually measure this one segment of the waveform. This one reluctor tooth on this camshaft. And once we're centered on it, we can see our delta time is two milliseconds. So it's saying that this reluctor was present for two milliseconds based off our cursors. Now if I want to go in and turn on our voltage cursor, you see it throws them up as well. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to move the voltage cursors by highlighting with our up and down, and we're going to use our left and right arrows to move them. So what we can do is we can really make advanced measurements. I'm going to go ahead and move this as well. Now we have a delta voltage and a delta time. So two milliseconds, the triangle is going to stand for delta, which is difference. And then we have delta voltage, which is 4.96 volts. So this cam sensor is functioning pretty flawlessly as far as reading our voltage or we know our reluctor is good. This is really important to use whenever you're examining your waveforms because a lot of times we look for just a pattern but sometimes we actually need to take some measurements of that pattern um, to make sure that our voltage amplitude and our on times are correct. And the easiest way it's going to be to do that is using the cursors. Um, with the cursors on you can leave them up like that and we can take a screenshot. So we're going to come up here to this B key. Using the B key, it's going to save a data file. Then it's going to save an image. And just make note of what your data file and image number are. Because when we go into the laptop, we're going to uh, modify those. And I'll show you how to use that data file to make a preset. And I'll show you how to use that screenshot um, to make a preset. And also be able to view it, print it, save it. Which is kind of cool. So we're going to go ahead and release this with the A key again. Remember the A key is our pause button. So I'm going to release it and we can keep scrolling through. Now if I want to turn those cursors back off, I'm going to simply scroll back to menu just like before. Scroll down to cursors. Open the cursor menu with OK. Scroll down to whichever cursor I want to turn off. And using the left and right arrow, I can turn them off. And you'll notice several of the presets have the cursors already loaded up on there. Um, first one that comes to mind is primary ignition amperage. Uh, that will allow you to measure not only what your peak amperage is, but also your uh, saturation time on the waveform, which is good because it'll help you track down intermittently weak coil pack. The other thing I want to go ahead and cover with you on the U-scope itself is, I'm going to show you how to do a custom start. Okay, so I'm going to turn my vehicle simulator off, and we'll start from a fresh screen. So I'm going to turn the U-scope on. All right, you'll notice that mine is set to 2 volts, 5 milliseconds, trigger at auto, trigger level is 4.08 volts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some drastic changes for you guys. I'm going to set it to half a volt. I'm going to set it to 500 microseconds, and I'm going to set my trigger to 500 millivolts. All right, 
I'm even going to change my trigger type to normal. Okay. At this point, once I have all my settings, including whatever probe style I want to use, and again, remember if you change, if you want to change your probe, we go to menu, vertical, scroll down to probe calibration, and using the left and right arrow. So I'm going to set this to let's put it at 100 to 100 millivolts to one amp. Okay. Now that I have that set, I can go back into the menu, go to the options, set custom start. If I press and hold OK for about two seconds, every time I turn this unit on, it's going to start with this screen exactly. So let's go ahead and try it. We've got everything set we wanted to, our probe calibration, our uh, voltage, our time, our trigger type, and our trigger level, because for whatever reason, this is, some, this is the screen that I use the most of. All right, so this is what I want it to start with. I'm going to go ahead and press and hold. It's going to say flash OK. Now to test it, I'm going to turn the unit off, turn the unit back on, and look at that. It's going to start that way every time I turn it on unless I change my custom start. So I'm going to go ahead and put my custom start back just so you guys can watch me do it again. So I'm going to change my probe type back to one to one all right I'm going to change my voltage two per division I'm going to 20 milliseconds and I'm going to change my trigger level back to four volts and I like to leave it on auto so I'm going to scroll over to menu I'm going to press OK to open the menu you can scroll up or down, it makes no difference. All the menu options are revolving. So if you go the opposite direction you want to, it's just going to start further away, but you'll still get to it. I'm going to open options with OK. Set custom start. Press and hold OK. Once you see this flash, it will flash very quickly. It will say SOK. And that means save is OK. So at this point, I can turn the unit off. I can turn the unit back on. And look, all my custom start is ready to go. And you can set it up however you want to. So if you find that you're doing something pretty regularly and you want to modify the, the default factory settings, by all means do it. If you get too far gone, you can always go back into menu, go into options, and hit reset factory and that will reset all of your startup settings back to factory and you're going to do the same thing just press and hold OK the flash will it, it will flash OK and I say hold it down for about two seconds once you see that factory setting changed OK and then back to factory you can release and it will put you back to whatever your factory setting was so let's go ahead and try that real quick I'm going to press and hold OK you saw it saying load OK very quickly. Now I'm going to turn the unit off. I'm going to turn the unit back on. And look, it, 2 millivolts, 5 milliseconds. I had it set it, and look at where my trigger is. So it put me back to a base everything. So I'm going to go ahead and reset this back the way I want, just so you guys can see that it doesn't matter how many times you do it. You can change it as much or as little as you want to. Press and hold OK. And that little flash up here where it, it changes and says OK, but it does it in a microsecond, so it's kind of hard to catch. But once that's saved, I can turn the unit off, turn the unit back on, and it will reload with all my personal settings. So that's kind of a cool feature. So the first thing we need to do for our data management is, is we're going to need to pick a computer to use. doesn't matter what computer you use. Um, and we're going to connect the USB cord from the U-scope to the computer or laptop. We're going to go ahead and look at a couple of things. Uh, one of which is there's some information that is stored on the tool that will help you better use the tool. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to modify that data file and image file that we saved previously with our one touch B key 
to go ahead and finalize making our own presets. And then I want to show you how to view and print images. And I'm going to show you the way I do it because I think it's probably the best way to do it. There are other ways to do it, but I want to show you this way because it's quick, easy, and makes it really clear. We're going to go ahead, hook our U-scope up to our laptop with the USB cord, and we're going to turn it on. The first time you hook your U-scope up, do not be surprised if you get this message right here. Uh, basically, all it's wanting to do is Windows is wanting to defrag the SD card because it's the first time it's been used. Not a big deal. Go ahead and do it. Get it out of the way so you don't see this message every time. I'm not going to do it right now just to save time, but I recommend you just go ahead and click Scan and Fix. Walk away for a couple minutes. Let it do its thing. Come back. It'll be fine. So we're going to go ahead and close this. The autoplay is going to bring up the uh, removable disk E, which is the U-scope. We're going to open the folder to view the files. On the SD card in the U-scope, we have all of our preset folders. So we have the preset for actuators, the amp, charging, ignition, sensor, and then the user folder. So let's cover uh, some of the information that's stored on here that will help you better use the tool. Inside of each one of the factory preset folders, there are some data cards for certain tests. And I want you guys to get used to looking at these, especially the first time you do them. Because it's not only going to give you information about uh, the test that you're doing, but also any warnings or required adapters to do the test. So let's look at the first one I think is important. We're going to go into charging. And here we see we have the alternator AC ripple data file, the image file, and then we have the PDF file, which is where our data card is going to be. It's going to give you that information I was just talking about. So we're going to go ahead and open this up. When the data card loads, it's going to show you the, the preset reference waveform. It's also going to show you how to activate the preset, which we covered in our first video. It's going to give you an overview of what the test is doing. It's also going to show you that in this case, I need an AC filter adapter. If you bought an, a master kit, it's going to come with it. If you bought a basic kit, it will not. Um, there is a hyperlink at the bottom and also right here that will take you directly to uh, AES Waves website for that particular item so you can purchase it if you uh, have the basic kit or if you need to replace it out of your master kit because you broke it or lost it or whatever the case may be. Um, it's going to give you some information about analyzing the waveform, anything that you should make note of while you're doing your test. Also. Uh, you know, in this case, it's going to give me a note saying to expect a little bit of ignition noise and general wave to the overall signal. And then give you something to maybe correct that. But don't be surprised if you're doing the AC ripple if you get a little bit of noise from the ignition system. Here are the hyperlinks I was referring to that will take you to that AC filter if you need to purchase it. A way to download this data sheet you're viewing if you want to download a copy. And then also a hyperlink to the AES Wave Tech Feed Support Group. Towards the bottom of the page, we have the U-Scope preset settings, which is everything that's being modified when you activate the preset. In this case, it's going to give me the voltage, the time, trigger mode, trigger level, trigger slope, the fact that it's not inverted, and then what, calib what probe it's using. At the very bottom on this one, there is a note that basically says, do not use the AES wave AC pass filter on alternating current line voltage circuits such as 120 volt AC found in a standard wall socket. It is intended to be used on DC automotive circuits only. What it's saying is, is that it is safe to use with the AC filter for automotive related AC voltage signals because most of the time they're very small. AC ripple, solenoid, wheel speed sensor, things of that nature. Do not hook the test leads to the 120 volt AC outlet at your house. You are going to destroy the scope and you will probably hurt yourself doing it. With all electrical devices, especially the U-Scope, I highly recommend again that you read all the warnings and you heed all of the warnings so that you don't damage the tool or hurt yourself. The other data card that I want to make note of that I think is very important that we look at is under ignition and it is for the primary ignition function so we're going to go down to primary ignition this is a pdf 
We can change the view to large icon so it looks a little better. There it is right there. We're going to go ahead and open it up. Again, it's going to tell me how to activate. Going to give me an overview, setup and connections. There's a big red warning right here. Must use primary ignition probe. And here is the probe pictured. Again, just like the AC filter, if you don't use this or you use it improperly, you're going to kill the tool. Um, that is a 10 to 1 attenuator for ignition. Uh, it says in here that uh, primary ignition can create voltages up to 400 volts or more. Okay, If you hook 400 volts up directly to this scope without the attenuator, the scope is going to be no more. So make sure you read these warnings and pay attention. Further down this data card, it's telling you what we're wanting to look at as far as waveform analysis. So we're not just looking at a pattern, we can also do some measurements and look at these things. Um, it's going to tell you that this preset defaults to auto trigger mode so that you can see the pattern. You can then adjust the trigger type or trigger level as necessary. We have some hyperlinks down here again that will take you to that uh, 10 to 1 attenuator if you need it. Um, if you didn't get the master kit or you need to replace the one out of your master kit, you just click that. It takes you to the website right there on the screen. You can purchase it. There's some case study videos, a hyperlink to AES Wave's YouTube channel, which has some other videos. And then again, the AES Tech Feed support group hyperlink. And then down at the bottom, the U-Scope preset settings. Most all the data cards are going to show you exactly what the preset settings are. And that's just so you know everything that's been modified. There are several data cards throughout this. Um, you know, if you open up sensor, there's a can high. There's, there's numerous ones in here. So now I want to go over. We have the data file and the image file that we saved previously in the video um, using that one touch B key. And they will be stored under the preset user folder. So again, pay attention when you click that B key as to what your data file number and your image file number is. Sometimes they will be different. Most of the time they will be the same. So if it's data file 7, it should be data it should be image file 7. But if it's not, just make note of it. You can change it. So we're going to open up this uh, user folder. And we're going to locate uh, data file 6 and image file 7. To complete the preset, all we're going to do is highlight the file, right click, and rename it. You can make up a name. I'm going to put this one as test. You get eight characters is all it's going to show on the screen. So if you go more than eight characters, it's going to chop it off. You know, So you can be creative. If this was a 5-volt camshaft sensor, I would put 5V underscore CMP. Okay, Whatever you name the data file, you must name the image file the exact same thing. So I'm going to do 5 volt underscore CMP and click off and let it save it. That is now my preset. Okay, So I'm going to find that under my user folder. So when you go into menu, scroll down to preset, click OK to open the preset folder. You're going to scroll down to user, use your left and right arrows to find the preset you want, then Press and hold OK till it loads and release the OK button. You've now made your own presets and it's pretty straightforward. You know, a couple of minutes of setup, making sure that your probe type, your voltage, your time, your trigger, your slope, all of that is set exactly how you want your preset. Then click that B key, let it save the data file, the image file, make note of what the numbers are, then connect to your PC, change the name, and you're done. If you want to keep it really organized, because this is a sensor, you can highlight both of those files. You know, just hold down the control key, click both of those files. You can right click cut. We can come over here to, because those are sensors, we can move them. Right click, paste, and they will show up in your sensors now. Just make note of wherever you put them. I like to move mine to wherever they're going to you know, whatever it is. If it's an amp clamp test, I'm going to put it under amp. If it's a sensor test, I'm going to put it under sensor. Um, you could put them wherever you want to, or you can leave them in the user folder. That's up to you totally. But that's how easy it is to make the presets on here. So 
So the last thing I want to show you guys while I'm hooked into the U-scope is uh, any, any pictures that you took um, and you want to view, save, or print, uh, again, they'll be under the user because I recommend that you always save the data file and the image at the same time. So they won't show up under image, they'll show up under user. So we're going to go into user. I'm going to pull up this file that I created just to show you what I'm talking about. When you do the B key save, that one touch B key, it's going to save whatever is on the screen. So if you have the meters window or the menu or a cursor up, it's going to show that. So I like to open these images in paint for editing because it's quick and easy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight this folder, this file. All right, this is my image. I'm going to right click with my mouse. And I'm going to open with paint. So here you can see that when I took this screenshot, it was on, the meters were turned on, and I had the meters tab opened on the menu. So you can see that. So I'm covering up a little bit of the waveform, but I got all my information that I wanted to see. All right. And this is a picture that I took from the first video, I believe. So if I wanted to print this file, so that I could have it for the work order or to give to the customer or to save for my own personal reference. What I recommend you doing, and again, you can do this several different ways, but this is the way I do it. I found this to be the easiest. I'm going to click View. I'm going to click Zoom In one time. And this should be the same for Windows 7, 8, and 10 users. Okay. Once I've zoomed in one time, I'm going to go back to Home. Now, you can print this the way it sits, but it's going to use a lot of ink and take a lot of time. So what I recommend you do is invert the colors. If you're an old Windows Paint user, invert colors used to be easy to find. They have hidden it from Windows 7 on. So Windows 7, 8, and 10, it's been hidden. So what you have to do is click Select right here, as if you were going to do a windowed select. You're going to come down to your image, again, right-click, it's going to open a drop down menu. You're going to have invert color. Click it. Once you invert the color, this is going to be a lot more printer friendly. And I promise you, it's going to print out a thousand times clearer than it did with the black background. Plus, your boss is probably not going to fuss at you for burning through a printer cartridge. Okay? If you do the invert color and you don't have a color printer, it's still going to show up cleaner, in my opinion, because everything's going to be grayscale on a white background. Okay? So that's just how I do it. Um, we'll close this and do it with one other image. I'm not going to save this one. Let's pull up this file here. So again, we're going to right click, open with paint. I'm going to go to view, zoom in one time, go back to home, click select, right click on my image, and I will get the drop down menu to invert color. Click invert, there you go. Now I can bring up my print menu, print that, and we're done. So whether you're making a preset or whether you're printing a picture, once you've accessed the U-Scope on your laptop, I would say you've got about a minute, maybe two, depending on how fast your computer is, from the time you actually plug the U-Scope in till the time it's coming out of the printer or your preset's finalized. Doesn't get much more simple than that. Those are both great features. I, this is the way I print my pictures. When I do print them, I find it's easier. If you do the zoom in one time, it prevents the pixelation, but it does blow it up a little bit. Um, it's going to print out about three by four inches, maybe a little bigger. Uh, might be closer to four by five, but it's a good size. Doesn't kill the printer. Uh, if you zoom in any further than that, you start to get pixelation, just because it was such a small image file to begin with. So I typically just zoom in one time and then go over and invert the colors. So there's a lot of good features in there inside of the U-Scope once you connect to a laptop. I just wanted to cover those things with you. Uh, this is the end of the second video. I have one more user video that's coming out right after this that's going to get into some really advanced stuff that's going to make you guys experts with this tool. Um, as always, thank you for watching. Hopefully you learned something. Also want to, again, give a big thank you to AES Wave for everything they do in the industry, from supporting training to providing tools like this for us to get, as well as supporting and 
uh, allowing me to make these videos to get these guys out. So a big thank you to them. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions or comments, if you leave them in the bottom, we'll get to them. And if need be, I can make another video to cover a subject that you guys want to see. So thank you very much.